Chapter One Two Pet Lions by Amanda B. Harris. If any of my readers should have occasion to call at a certain house in Boston, number fifty four Howard Street, close by the Revere House, and should be shown into the family sitting room, they should notice the very first thing a curious arrangement for such a place. For certainly it is very queer in a prettily carpeted and furnished room of the kind where the household are in the habit of gathering to sew and read and chat and where guests are received to see a grated door and lying at the threshold just beyond it as much at home as two puppies or kittens two large lions but there we saw them and in that room they live members of the family one might almost say all the year round except as they are let out into a little yard to spend a part of each day the walls of their room are brick the floor is wood and it is as large as a good-sized sleeping room so do they have plenty of space to stroll about in the door is made of a few strong wire bars and fastens on the outside by a sort of hasp and they have one window looking out into the long narrow alley which is their own yard it is a passageway a few feet wide with a high wall at the front end and high brick walls on each side with vines and pretty green things growing upon the edge and it is open at the top the whole length so they have the fresh air the blue sky and the sunshine when they are out there these lions are a little more than two years old not yet fully grown but great tall long strong creatures even now they are not brother and sister for each one came from a different litter and are the only ones that lived the father and mother of one are dead the two other parents real african lions brought over in a ship are living now and travelling about the country in a menagerie the little ones were born in new york and the lady who shows them to you whose husband was a showman took them under her care at once and called them her babies and she speaks to them about their mamma and they understand her and kiss her lapping her face and whining softly as a kitten does she brought them up and no one else had any charge of them they used to lie in her lap and slept on her bed at night until they were quite large one she named willie and the other martha and she talks to them and pets them with no more fear of them than if they were dogs or cats she used to let them come into the sitting room but since they are so grown people who go to the house are a little in fear of them so that the grating is now always kept shut but the creatures seem to love to come and lie down as close to it as they can get where they can see the family and be near them and there they will stretch themselves out and lie in the most satisfied manner nobody goes inside their room but this lady mrs lincoln and nobody else feeds them or does anything for them she gives them each day twelve pounds of beef not always sirloin steak she said but good meat and always beef because that is the most helpful for them and keeps them in perfect condition no other kind of food is allowed them one of them had a bone playing with it and licking it i could not help asking what would happen if the beautiful maltese and white kitten that was frolicking about the room should stray within reach of willie's great quick paw but mrs lincoln said they had always had a cat there and nothing had befallen her she knew better than to go near the grating the lady took a little rattan in her hand opened the door and walked in willie was lying just under her feet and she said get up sir and roll over and he obeyed something else that she asked him to do he seemed to feel rather lazy about and she gave him a rap after which he appeared to be very sorry and made a plaintive little whine and reached up his great head and kissed her as if to coax her at which she said yes kiss mamma which made him happy she made him stand up on his hind feet and stretch his forepaws up as high as he could 
She put her hand in his mouth between his long, sharp teeth and patted him on the head. Then he came back to the door and lay down again, growling a little, perhaps with satisfaction that it was over with. She says they never attempted to harm her, and she has no fear that they ever will. She has been with them ever since they were born, and they love her. While we were there, a young lady who used to live in the family came in and went right up to the grating, got down on the floor, and Willie put up his face and kissed her through the bars. He was so glad to see her. Martha remains more quiet, though she looks as if she has spirit enough and would do her part in the tricks when called on. Probably no sight can be seen anywhere else in this country or in the world as these two tame lions living with a woman on such companionable terms and wholly under her control. Any visitors can see them, but it is expected that they will pay a small fee for doing so, or buy a photograph of the lions which is for sale. The picture given here is one of the lady and her strange pets out of several attitudes in which Mr. Black, the photographer, took them. Perhaps you will wonder, as I did, where Mr. Black took the pictures and how he managed to do it and to keep them so still and attentive. For you see, they are both very alert and gazing earnestly at something. In answer to these questions, their mistress told me that she had them out in a sort of yard which was beyond the alley, and the photographer attracted their attention to some object, and so secured these admirable likenesses. There is no way of getting out of their own quarters except through the sitting room, and through that Mrs. Lincoln conducts them, day after day, to their playground out of doors. Imagine being a visitor at the house or a caller, and having these enormous, sharp-toothed, big-pawed pets passing, unmuzzled and unchained past you. Probably you would make a hasty retreat, and not stop until there was a closed door between yourself and them. The last time I was there, hoping to see them playing out in the sunshine, she had just taken them in that she might have the washing hung out to dry in their alley. Perhaps it is not so strange that she has no fear, for she bought these, and three others, five little whelps like puppies from New York in her lap, and nursed them up. The others died, as you already know, on a bottle such as babies are fed from, until they knew how to lap the milk from a dish, and on milk they were fed from her own hand until they could eat meat. They are fed now only once a day, at noon and not at all on Sunday, such being the regulation in menagerie, she informed me. In addition to this, they have water once a day, and at night they sleep on the bare boards. They play with each other like kittens, and sometimes they roar like their kind in a savage state. Martha is the most quiet, but she has keen watchful eyes, and they both look up sharply when the doorbell rings, and a new footstep is heard. Indeed, all their perceptions seem acute. Large sums have been offered for them, for there is not such a case known in the world as two tame lions kept by a woman. She has not yet decided what she shall do with them, but it seems quite probable that some day when they are full grown, and Willie has become a more ferocious looking creature, with a great shaggy mane falling over his neck, and a terrible voice, they will be exhibited about the country, the wonder of everybody, by their resolute and affectionate mistress. Some day they will be very famous. End of chapter one. Recording by Ruth.